Now, someone made a request about having the enemy show up in a random position. All right, and I'm just going to close this window because we don't need it open any longer. We can close that. We don't need that open. All right, cleaning house. So let's work with this. We want the enemy to show up in a random position so that we need we need to figure out a random X and a random Y in which to put them. And that's fine, but what we really want to do is we want to coordinate it so that when they appear on screen, they're appearing in a floor cell, not in any of the wall locations. And that requires us to do a little bit of calculations on this. To accomplish this, what we need to do is we need to choose a random position and we could choose a random column and a random row off of our list. So with this, I'm going to work on making this function for it. And this function is going to it's going to return a, when it's all done instead of returning void well we want to call this so it will create our random enemy starting position and it re needs to return two integers one to represent a row on our map so which row are we going to put it in and then which column are we going to put it in so that means we're returning integers, but we're returning an array because we want to return two values. We don't want to have to write the function twice and do calculations twice, one to return the column, one to return the row. It would just be easier to just return both values. So that's why the columns and rows are all integers because it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in both directions because we have a 10 by 10 grid. So now, And it's not a bad idea. Make your function names long enough when you do it so that they mean something. Now, right now, it's giving me an error message because it's now you know, wanting to return something. So we need to return a value, but we don't have a value to return yet because we need to make that. So first, let's create a random, we'll choose a random row. Now, keep in mind rows are Y values and X's are column values. So we're going to choose a random row. And we do that We'll call this ty for a temporary y, or temporary row, but I, I like to think in terms of y's and x's while we're doing this. So rows correspond to our y's, columns respond to our x's. So getting used to that I think is useful. So our temporary y will be, we need to round down, and we'll grab a random number, and the range of numbers we want to work with will be how many elements are in our tile map. How many elements is how many rows. So we say tile map dot length. Just like that. And then we'll grab for X. Now this is giving us our row and column so we could then multiply this by cell height and cell width. And we'll do that when we calculate the actual pixel dimensions that we will be sending to our enemy when we create our enemy. So I, I guess technically this should be um, our temporary column. And I'm saying temporary because we have to check and verify when we grab a random number that we don't position it on a wall tile. And now this time we want to grab a random, create a random number 
based on how many columns there are. It doesn't matter which row we use, so we could put in the one we just chose, or we could just go zero because all the rows have the same length, so it doesn't really matter what we do here in terms of which specific row that we're grabbing it out of. And just like that, we've created two values. So, what we can do is we're going to print this out and we'll, we can, I don't know, we'll print out in a little bit. But first, if we wanted to use these values and pass it, so we're first just going to pass the values to it and prove we can do this, then we're going to correct it so we don't land on any wall tiles. And we'll add in some more walls as well, just to make it harder for the algorithm to succeed on this. So now what we can do is we're going to make a an array here and this will be our our pixel position that we want to send to it. And this array, we're just going to populate it. Now, when we are declaring arrays directly, we use curly braces. When we're accessing arrays, we use the square bracket notation. So with this, I'm going to take that Y position because I'm the first number in my array is going to be the row and then I'll multiply this by the cell height that we have established in our setup and then we'll pass in our cell width values and then we now return finally not ret run return Our pixel position. And we're still red underlined because I forgot to put a semicolon at the end of that statement there. Okay, so this now creates a random position, chooses a row, chooses a column in which to put it. Now, what we can do is we can pass that to the enemy when we create a new enemy. So when I create the enemy, I want to pass that in. So we just pass that function and now it's underlined because it's like, well, that doesn't exist. So let's go into the enemy and make it exist. So this is how we can make this become part of our code here. So I go int square brackets and then I can just give this a name of, I'm gonna just call it POS. So instead of positioning the enemy at the middle of the screen, we're going to position it. And this time our X is now going to be the second item in that array and y, because remember we passed in y then x. And we're probably going to start referencing things y, x, because that's how, when we're using our tile map, that's how it sets it up. We choose a row and then we choose a column. So rows correspond to y's, columns go to x's. So sometimes if we're finding it confusing to go this way, we just start declaring y instead of x as our values. Now if we run this, we'll see that it's now appearing in squares. We'll also notice it's not appearing centered, it's appearing in the top left corner because that's giving us the coordinate for that particular tile. If we wanted this centered, what we need to do is we need to then center our position 
by adding in half of our width and adding in minus adding in half of our height. Now I'll notice we're getting yeah you know, we have these values. Currently those values are zero because we declare them afterwards. So we do have to reverse order these lines. And now we can see I landed on a wall. We run it again, we're on a wall, we're not on a wall, but we are centered visually within this. So then that's good. Now if our grid, so our cells were 32 by 32, our players were, th and enemies are 32 by 30. So if everything's the same size, then we don't have to do that. We can just position it. So keep that in mind because we may be modifying as the project progresses to make our game world grid a look so that everything is all based on the same unit size. So that is something we may need to adapt as we go forward. But right now we're landing on the walls, so that's not good. But we're in pretty good shape here because we've been able to randomly position things here. So what I want to do is I, I want to adjust this a little bit so that we don't just accept these values, but we verify that the value chosen here is zero. So we have to keep coming up with new x's and new y's or new rows and columns until we get a value that is zero. So let's go back into the function here and what I'm going to do is print it out so we know when this happens because it'll be kind of fun to see this. So our start row and column, we'll print that out. Well, we'll just go, actually we'll just say ty plus ty plus space, quote space tx quote plus tx, just like that. Let's just run it again, verify it prints it out. So they dumped it into so we can see zero, one, two, three, four. So it's the fifth column, but array position four, and we count down, that will be the eighth row if we start counting one, or if we go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, knowing that it's 10 by 10, so then that is eight, that is nine. So we know that those were the positions and those are allowed. Now, what we can do is we can say, we can use a different kind of loop that we haven't looked at before, and this is a while loop. A while loop will run until it finally achieves a true statement. So unlike a for loop, which runs a specific fixed number of times. So our for loop, it runs and it keeps running until that is no longer the case here. This is an easier one to write using a while statement. So tile map, and then we go ty, tx, like this. So we're accessing the item that we chose. So while that item is not equal to zero, meaning because we want it to be zero, zero represents floor. So while this item is not zero, what we're going to do is recalculate ty and tx, but this time we don't need to make new values for them. So let's just delete that, delete that. Uh, auto format, commander control T, that cleans up my indents. So it's a good idea to try and do that while we're working on it. And so this will keep running until it finally achieves a value of zero.
So now this will be a revived ty, which will be the same value as the original if it um, is not, you know, if it doesn't have to change it, it will show both of them. They'll match, but otherwise we will see that it doesn't line up. And it's just easier to watch while that happens. All right. So now, let's run it again. Let's see what we get. Okay, we'll just keep running until we fail. And now you can see we got 9.8 on our first try and then revised it to 5.6. So 9, the, that would have put us at the bottom and 8. So we were in this square down here and then it had to revise it to 5.6 because it failed. If we run again, we can see 6262, 6, well then that matched. So this shows how we're able to dump our enemy into an empty square. And to further verify that this is working, we're just going to add a few more squares or walls just to make this a little bit harder for it to succeed. So we don't want it to be too easy for the computer to figure this out. So we'll add in a few more walls. And then as we do this, we will also change the number of sprites that are appearing and go from one to a bunch. All right, so I haven't created any actual impossible to get to spots. I'm just going to add one more in just to break up that space a little bit more in the middle. All right, so I've now created a much tighter game world with this. And what we can do is go enemy in array and make it enemies. Enemies is equal to new enemy array and this time we'll, we'll go and put 20 in it for now. It's a decent amount. Let's just create a simple for loop. So I will start out at zero. I is less than enemies at length. I plus plus or standard for loop kind of situation. So enemies is equal to a new enemy. And now we call that function. I'm just going to copy paste. specify which one we're adding into the array. Okay, so that's created all of our enemies. I'm just going to, in the interest of time, copy that and now paste that in. And we're not bothering to update them because they're not moving yet, but we will display them. And we'll see that it does indeed work. And if we figure 20 isn't hurting it, we'll just go 200. And now it, we are, some of the enemies are appearing on top of each other. That's why if we tried to count, so we can see we did fill almost every available square. Missed two, and now we filled every square, but we haven't filled anywhere on the walls. So, 
dumping in a random enemy, we created a method that returns an array of two values, the pixel position that we want this to show up in. So it returns that value to us so that the enemy is able to use that and then position itself within a given square. So this allows us now to have multiple enemies. So this is good. And if I were in my project and wandering through, eventually I would find the original enemy and because we would see the intersect glow yellow. But we haven't uh, run, figured out which is the magic one. Oh, right there. So it landed in that square. That's where it went. All right. So we're able to run this repeatedly and now it filled it again. That's good. So we have a random position for the enemy. We probably don't need 200 in a map of this size because, well, there aren't 200 squares to put them in, so that would be problematic. But we're off to a good start. Could just say two. Next, we need to figure out how to not collide with the walls.